Good morning, St. Louis. It is 7 a.m. on a Tuesday, so y'all know what time it is. It's time for the St. Louis Hustle Podcast with your boy Cortez Hustle and my girl Michelle. Hey, and today we're talking six ways to celebrate Juneteenth. And ladies and gentlemen, sometimes to celebrate and support things that are particularly specifically uh, created for us. Uh, don't think that it always takes money. Now, if you got some money, then you want to spend some money. And we're going to give you some ideas and some places to do just that. But we are getting ready for Juneteenth this weekend, so we're excited about that. So we're going to give you some ways that you can celebrate it in a positive fashion. Get yourself educated up on the, uh, the holiday itself. So do us a huge favor. Comment in the chat where you're from. Drop the name of your business and all your brand. Smash that share button, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's kick it this morning. Growing up in St. Louis has never been easy, and most say if you want to succeed here, that you must leave and put down roots somewhere else because of the strong crabs and apparel mentality here. I don't know if I'm just an optimistic person, but to see people like Chuck Berry and Nelly make it in the music industry, or the Roberts Brothers and Dave Stewart in business, or William Lacey Clay Jr. in politics, can we blame the city, or is it that people just aren't hungry enough? We're talking to all of the movers and shakers in this town, from entertainers to politicians, social activists and organizers, and of course, entrepreneurs. Is there a curse on this city that holds people back? Is there an unseen hand that decides who makes it and who doesn't? You're about to find out. Welcome, Welcome to St. Louis Hustle. Hustle. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the St. Louis Social Podcast. I'm Cortez Hustle. That's my girl, Michelle. Hey! And we are coming to you live and direct from the Local Business Marketing Pro Studios right here in St. Louis. Hey, if you need a local business marketing pro in your corner, we want to be that for you. Uh, you need to catch that, Michelle. We rebranded Thornton Online Marketing to Local Business Marketing Pro. That's right. We want to help you build authority websites. We want to help you with your paid advertising. We want to help you with your social media. We want to help you build a bigger, more robust brand that attracts you the customers that you want to be dealing with. And in order for us to do that, uh, you need to connect with us. So feel free to drop us a line at 314-730-3999 or just hit us up on the inbox, man. Let us help you with your marketing. Chalet. How was your weekend, and people only knew what be going on when the little introduction be playing. Boy, I tell you the truth. Like, that's why I always come on giggling because it just seemed like in the little 20 seconds, <laughs> a lot be going on. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, we in, but on my end, I'll be over here doing something, everything. <laughs> and it seems like I always cut off. And you know, I normally get cut off guard each week. And this time I was ready, but I got tickled because I was like, I'm not doing that. I still got tickled. I, I, I got yeah, tickled. Tickle just... you no, know it is exactly 56 seconds, Michelle. 56? So, uh, yeah. I cram a lot into my 56 seconds now. <laughs> I don't know what you do with your 56, but with my 56, <laughs> I'm over here finishing up breakfast. I'm over here painting. I'm over here driving. I'm doing a lot. And I finished today. I think I finished in 54 and a half seconds. It was like, whoa. Yeah, you can make yeah, it on I got time. You made it on time. Look at the Lord. Okay, so what I do this weekend? You know, I, uh, it's so funny because people, okay, I'm going to start here. People will often, um, folks will watch us. Folks need to say hi to us more often when they watch us. That's the first thing. You know, mm -hmm. so I think that's rude to be peeking and don't be speaking. That's right. So Who say hi. raised you? Say hi. You don't want to drop the name of your business in or your brand. At least say hi in the comments. At least say you know. hello. <laughs> At least say hello. Don't be peeking and not speaking. That's rude, people. That's the first thing. Okay? But people, I see people in the street, they be like, I watch it. First of all, I hate it when people say, I watch your little show. <laughs> Look at here, okay? COVID did a number. If it, this show was anything, it is not little, okay? I got yeah. I got 35, 40 pounds to say that this show ain't little. That's the first <laughs> thing. But they'll say, okay, yeah, we I still watch the show, you know, so I'll be hearing you. You know, you don't say anything. It's rude and you need to get your life right. Right. God is not pleased. Okay, that's that. Um, so uh I, I just want to kind of put that out there because people always say that, oh my god, I still watch a show. New people. I had a couple people from church, shout out to influence. I had a couple mm -hmm. people from uh church was like, hey, I was just 
going through podcasts or a friend of mine told me to click on because she was going to be on and I saw you. <laughs> well, say hello. Say hello. Okay. That's that's a whole enough of that. So uh, I, saying that, I said all that to say, um, the last time I made this statement, I got invited to a backyard barbecue. I got invited okay. to a cookout. I said, I don't have enough to do. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to make the statement again. People of St. Louis, I don't have enough to do. There, I said it. So I need some backyard parties. I need some front yard parties. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I need something to do this summer, right? So y'all know, since you watch the show, you know I don't <laughs> sugar shack like I used to. Uh, and so I need activities to get out and do that uh, keep me from sugar shacking. Sugar shacking, I'm getting older now. And I, I just, I don't think my husband is at the sugar shack. I, there it is, I said it. <laughs> I don't think he's there. I don't think he in there waiting, doing the line dance, waiting on Shelly Shell mm-hmm. to get there. I don't mm-hmm. think that's what's happening. So I need more things to do in the community. So if you know about events coming up in your local neighborhood, invite a sister out. Let me bring mm-hmm. my let me bring my, my selfie stick and come out and kick it with you and your people. Again, I will go to a backyard barbecue and I will go live and I will I will shout you and your family out. We can get it how we live. But that is my call out. And, you know, as far as my weekend, I kicked it with my grandson. He is just, he is the man in my life right now. And my grandson <laughs> is everything. He's crawling. And uh, I discovered he got a mighty, he got a mighty wicked right hand. Uh, first of all, he got big hands to begin with. So I always wanted, that was the first thing when he was born, he climbed out. Because that was the first thing that came out the womb was his hand. <laughs> and, you know, you play with the babies. He's eight months. He's crawling. He's getting around. Man, I was looking at him, and he was looking at me so lovingly. I was like, oh, man, I love it. Not that baby. And he was like, holding my face. He was like, bow. And I was like, and it hurt. I said, I got to put you down. Because if I don't put you down, I'm going to field goal you across the room. So I better just put you down and walk away, you man. Walk away. We are not. We beef it right now. It was the hardest slap I ever yeah, that's wow. my weekend. I'm surprised you ain't here. You should have heard it. <laughs> should have came across like a right. You hear me? Should have came across on the size of a graph like an earthquake. You should have felt it. Oh, that's great. That's great. That was that's it. Great. How was your weekend? Uh, it was pretty fun, man. We we actually, the uh, honey and I took uh, my nephew. Um, and when when I say my nephew, people always think I'm talking about a little kid. No, this joke is grown. Uh, but we <laughs> we go. Uh, he's he's the <laughs> only son of my deceased brother, right? Gotcha. So we gotcha. try to get him in our lives as much as awesome. possible. He's not easy to deal with. He, he, he had lead poison, something terrible when he was a kid. So he suffers from some challenges uh, mentally and emotionally. But nevertheless, we got to hang out with him and we went to see the new uh, Jurassic Park movie over the weekend and um it was, it was, was it good it, it was pretty good it was it was it, it kept sugar's attention she don't do sci-fi and all that stuff i man. don't <laughs> that's why I, that's why that's why it's my whole girl i can't do sci i've watched about one or two of them jurassic parks halfway mm-hmm. through yeah. they lose yeah yeah so so we we actually uh hung out and it was pretty cool uh and then i spent all day yesterday getting getting the car together uh, we actually hit the road for juneteenth we'll be in uh, KC, uh, celebrating Juneteenth with the Black Mastermind group, uh, Dr. Danetta Watson and that crew uh, over there uh, with a big okay. Black Expo uh, and uh, oh, yes, Dr. Fraser is coming Expo. in and got some celebrations going on. So uh, I'm excited. Your boy will be doing a little training and uh, hosting the uh, speaker panel. So uh, working, but at the same nice. time connecting with some good people. So I'm excited about that. So that was my weekend. Uh, awesome. So, yeah, man, had a good time. So if you guys know anything about the show, then uh, after Michelle tells us what she's done for the weekend, and now it's time for her to tell us a word of the day. So I have a good word today. You've got a good word for I love it when she gets excited like that. So we're not going to delay the moment. Let's get into the Michelle A. Word of the day. Wait a minute. And now the Michelle A. Word of the day. Hey, what's up, party people? It is your girl, Michelle A, coming at you with today's word of the day. I'm so excited. I got this word yesterday, and it hit me 
normally when a word hit me, it'd be, of course, it'd be for me. But I feel like I need to let the residue splash off on y'all. Splash. There you go. So today we're going to talk about something that you may not want to admit to. Sometimes you don't even know if it's you, but we're going to call it out today. And that is laziness. <gasps> Are you lazy? Do you get up and do what you're supposed to be doing when you're supposed to be doing it? Or are you a little slothful? That's some words you don't hear every day. Slothful. We're going to find out today. So I, I heard y'all know I'll be following my online mentor, Darius Daniels. Shout out to, he's just an awesome, awesome teacher. And so I follow him online. And so he was teaching on um, some of the things that kill excellence, right? If you're trying to be a person and you're trying to live for God, trying to be excellent in all your ways, one of the things that kills excellence is laziness. Like sometimes we don't even realize we're being lazy when we're being lazy, but we be being lazy. So we started off, he gave this excellent scripture and I just thought it was like super fantabulous. This scripture is from Proverbs 26, 14. It's pivotal. I love it. It's going someplace, people. It is, as the door, turn, let me put my little laptop right here. Pardon me, y'all. As the door turns on its hinges, so a sluggard turns in his bed. One more time for the people in the back. Proverbs 26 and 14, as the door turns on its hinges, so does a sluggard turn in his bed. The illustration that went along with that people was so eye-opening. It just means that when we are lazy, we miss opportunities. Now, we know that God can open a window. He can open a door, et cetera, et cetera, right? And open doors normally mean blessings. So if you really think about that scripture, literally, right, as the, as the hinge of the door turns, right, and the door opens, so a person turns in their bed, a lazy person turns in their bed. So as that door is opening for a new opportunity, a lazy person turning over in bed. And we ain't missing it, people. We missing it. So a lot of times we don't know we being lazy when we're being lazy. Take a few moments and examine where you are, you know, in your life. Look at the goals that you want. Look at some of the habits that you have. Do you sleep in every morning? Is there some time that you can take to get up and maybe commune with God, maybe commune, get out, you know, pray, walk, do whatever. Challenge yourself, even on small scales, to do something extra for your relationship with God today and make sure that you don't miss them, them open doors. Don't be turning over in your bed when your door is open. So that is my word for the day. Hope it bless you like it bless me, people, because I'm going to get through my doors. Hmm. That's your word of the day. <laughs> Boom. I love it. I love it. I love it. It is. You really have to uh, be active, an active participant. Yes. In your rescue, right? Yes. Whether that rescue is business, oh, whether it's personal, whether it yep. is relational with God, absolutely, with a spouse with a child. Yep. Be active, man. I love that. So that yep. is the Michelle A word of the day, brought to you by SEL Hot Deals, ladies and gentlemen. If you want some hot deals. Then you need to go to stlhotdeals.com up to 70% off some of your favorite homegrown businesses, product services, restaurants, events, attractions, merchandise, buy one, get one free offers. All you got to do is go to SEL Hot Deals and subscribe. And every week they'll send you text messages and emails with coupons for some amazing stuff going down here in the St. Louis market. So make sure y'all go to SELHotDeals.com. Link is in the comments and in the show notes as well. Uh, check that out. So today we're talking about Juneteenth, man. How are you Juneteenth. celebrating Juneteenth? Put that in the comments for us down below. What are your goals with celebrating Juneteenth? And riddle me this, Batman. Is your job giving you the day off? On we the pay. Planet? Oh, with pay. With, with pay. Let with me tell you pay. something now. Let me tell you, that's a good question because, see, folks, we just got it signed by um, Homeboy. You mm -hmm. know, it's, I forgot the man's name, but I love to put on the little aviated glasses. Our president, <laughs> he signed that thing last year. Some companies is like, some states are sitting back with their arms folded like, I ain't going. <laughs> and some, but some states have. They are it's a recognized holiday. It's recognized because they signed the paper. But is your company gonna pay you for that? Yeah. So we we gonna look at that um, as well. But you know what? Now Cortez, you said you was getting out. Shout out the bank. Uh, Cause like she just took off like a rocket. 
Catch me if you can. Um, I know you said you and the sugar was going to Kansas City this weekend. But what about the great good people of St. Louis? What we doing this weekend? Mm-hmm. But you don't think, mm-hmm. people, what are we doing? So we got a couple things on the calendar. We're going to just, you know, just mention out to you. I am going to challenge myself. I'm going to get over some of the anxiety that I have. Y'all don't be thinking I have anxiety, but sometimes <laughs> in large crowds. So it just depends on my mood. I've been in large crowds where I could just work the crowd and just, hey, how you doing? Hey, what's going on? There mm-hmm. are other times in large crowds where I just, boy, get hot and my heart start beating and I just, I'm like, yeah. I got to get out of here. <laughs> so um, I'm going to challenge myself and I am going to be it with someone or by myself. A lot of times I find myself, I'd be, be solo bolo out here. So mm-hmm. I'm going to challenge myself and I'm going to get out and get to one of these events this weekend and yeah. I'm going to go live and because see if I don't show somebody, I got to be held accountable. But mm-hmm. as you know me, and mm-hmm. if I don't show you, I might not get done. Right. So I'm gonna try right. to go live. So uh, Thursday night, they're starting early with Juneteenth. Thursday night, they got a Thursday night at the History Museum. Um, so that's a great way over at Forest Park to get things kicking for your uh, get things started for your Juneteenth weekend. That is on the 16th. Um, on June the 19th, uh, they have a Juneteenth celebration. Um, you can join the CAM group and the Pulitzer Arts Foundation. They're going to be at the Sheldon Concert Hall uh, and Art Gallery. So you can join them. They've got some stuff going on. Um, let me see. Ooh, one more thing here. I just want to call out a couple of these. There mm-hmm. is a Juneteenth community ride. Um Celebrate St. Louis's Black artists, musicians, and history with a bike ride feature. Oh, I'm not going to go to this. Mm, sorry. Y'all check this out. <laughs> uh, so I, I just, I just, you know, Googled on um, Juneteenth St. Louis 2022, what's going on around the loop. They've got tons and tons of activities that are really going on. Dare I say, darn near to the end of the month. So there really is yeah. not an excuse. Don't sit back mm-hmm. and say, St. Louis don't even recognize Black people. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Because there's plenty of stuff on this calendar to do. And I'm going to probably be real out of order when I say some of this. A lot of this, you know, Black people stay, we stay on the map about Juneteenth. But some of these organizations are um, Caucasian driven. And they mm-hmm. try to keep us on the map as well. So we need mm-hmm. to get out there. Unite with our brothers and sisters, no matter what they color are, and we need to celebrate you too. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I love. I love that some of these are like these are big institutions that have um, decided to make this a thing, and that's what it's got to be. We all have to be in a time, place, and space where it is okay to celebrate our differences and our contributions. It right is. when you understand what Juneteenth actually represents. It is the celebration of the end of slavery, right? Yep. <laughs> like that's, that's what, what it, it is. is. So I don't care if you're Ooh. white, black, Hispanic, Asian, uh, Jamaican, man, whatever. Jamaica. We should be Jamaica. all in agreement with that is something worthy of celebrating, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you're Absolutely. not, I got to question whether or not um, what, what your motives are, like. Like, why would you not want to celebrate the end of not just slavery, indentured servitude, chattel slavery, where this country literally treated human beings like property? So uh, I think uh, it is a good thing to see all of the different organizations. The Missouri History Museum is big, right? Um, Harris Stowe has uh, allowed my girl, Miss Woody, to celebrate yet again. She's doing her second annual Show Me June, uh, Juneteenth STL, which is a big thing all over the campus of uh, uh, Harris Stowe. Uh, is that Miss Woody? Comedian Miss Woody? Yeah, the comedian Miss Woody. Yeah. What? Yeah. I, man, shout out to Miss Woody and all 1,500 yeah, of her kids. She, she, shout she, out to, Woody. she, Miss Woody would used to come copy shows in the cab. Be like, hey, Miss yeah. Woody. Shout yeah. out to her. She been in the game a long. She was in the game before I got in it. And mm-hmm. when I say she's a soldier, she's a soldier. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right. And she's on a mission to end homelessness. So um, yeah. that is something that That's she's got her. going on. Uh, let me just show y'all. 
And then we're going to get into these six ways to celebrate uh, Juneteenth. But I uh, apologize if the flyer didn't, didn't come up as I downloaded it straight from uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. But uh, she's got performances. She's got uh, legendary music showcases going on. Uh, so much going on right there on that. Oh. Uh, uh, right I'm, I'm, I'm hair stuff. <laughs> I can't. That's my seeing so, face. So y'all yeah, make sure y'all check those things out. So let's get into how, how we, we can celebrate uh, Juneteenth. And before I do this, let, let me go on uh, a tangent real quick because go ahead. You're we're talking about the end of slavery, right? And mm -hmm. and really to really create freedom for my, for ourselves, right? What does freedom really mean? Freedom means to be totally free and independent and empowered economically. And until we get to that place, we're still not totally free, right? Now we have freedoms, we have um, rights and privileges that are no longer being denied us. But at the end of the day, Professor Small says, hey, until we can feed, clothe, house, and support ourselves in terms of safety and security, then we are not yet free. And it mm -hmm. all of those things require economic empowerment, right? Food, clothing, shelter, safety, and security still to this day largely comes from our dependence upon other cultures, right? Now, we've got to start moving. We're moving in that direction. But I think while there's nothing wrong with us being accepted into a community hospital, every other culture has their own hospital. While it is uh, certainly acceptable for us to buy clothes manufactured and produced by other brands, every other culture produces their own clothing. It's cool for us to uh, live in homes built by uh, large institutions, home builders and all of that kind of stuff, but every other culture can turn to a segment in their culture to build their own stuff, right? We've got to get to that place where we not only um, are in these industries, but we are creating ownership in these industries as well. Go ahead. I saw that hand go up. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Mr. Hustle, I have a question. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So when it is said that other cultures or other what you you said cultures right cultures okay other cultures people. and communities they they buy their own they have their own clothing mm -hmm. sorry lord uh does that mean that well how do you mean like for maybe people that might be of asian descent now are you speaking in reference to clothes that are made in korea or china because if that's <laughs> the case i mean because the whole nike brand i'm pretty sure we know that AU is made <laughs> A lot of the designer clothes. Um, now I know we wear other folks' stuff. I get that, but mm -hmm. do do Korean people have Korean? <laughs> I mean, I, I used to wear Fubu. <laughs> right, wear right, Fubu. right. <laughs> and we got to get back to more of that. So even if so, so what we tend to do is hover around the retail space, right? We start businesses and we do the retailing. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you're in a retail business, you're selling someone else's product or service, that's amazing that you've even gone down the road of entrepreneurship because it takes courage to be an entrepreneur. But at some point, we got to get to the wholesale side. Then we got to get to the buyer side. Then we got to get to the manufacturer side. Then we got to get to the raw material side because all of these cultures understand that they're, they're getting as close as they can to the raw material side. Now, Nike doesn't manufacture their, their, their own stuff, but they own enough of the market that the margins they make on the products that they're buying from somebody else being manufactured, that Nike is a multi, multi-billion dollar company that hires tons and tons of their people. Now, some of us, our people work for Nike. Sure they do. Are some of our people working at Foot Lockers and and finish lines and stuff selling Nike products. Right. Sure they are. But we are still the number one most unemployed group of people yeah. in this country because we haven't figured out how to get beyond the retail. In which case, if you started a boutique today, you would probably have 
five to 10 employees. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you got to the manufacturing side and the distribution side on a large scale, how many people would you hire then? And that's where we have to start elevating <clears throat> in order to create this economic empowerment engine that we need to do what? Those five things. We've got to provide our own homes, our own safety, our own security, our own food, and our own clothing at the end of the day. Because think about this, Michelle. If we don't provide our own food, what happens if all of a sudden trucks just stop running to the hood? To, they just stop coming to the they glad you bring right with, to the hood. To the hood. <laughs> Put that out like, there. Hey, we, we ain't bringing no more Pepsi. We ain't bringing no more. We ain't coming it's, down it's, there no more. Y'all got to meet us at one seven. We don't have real food coming in the first place. But right. at least Lay's trucks will show up with some chips and some snacks, right? right? It, but, you know, when you go to the corner store, that's all you're getting, right? You ain't getting much real food. But what happens right. if that stops? Right, right, right. We don't have any control and ownership stake in a lot of the things that we need to actually exist on this planet. And that has to change. And that's what I want to see. And a lot of these Juneteenth celebrations are around the economic empowerment of the inner city communities where we are the predominant residents of those places. So uh, I had to say that because that's where, for me, that's my mission, right? I have a mission right. and a vision. My mission is to bring economic empowerment to our communities by way of entrepreneurship. I believe the shortest distance between working class and wealthy is a straight line called entrepreneurship, right? More of us got to get involved and more of us got to produce businesses that are profitable, scalable, sustainable, and most of all, fundable, right? So I believe that's, that's the mission for me. The vision for my company is to see Black people as the number one employers of Black people in the next two generations. We cannot continue to count on other people to hire and employ us, right? Because if you look at these other cultures like I do, I look at them as families, right? right. If, if I hired you to work for my family business, Michelle, and things got tight in terms of revenue and finances for the company, do you expect me to keep you on board over one of my sons? You can't. Like, I, you would hope that I would, that you bring enough value, but if somebody right. ever get fired, who's getting we fired? You know. or my son? <laughs> you already know. You already know. I give, look, I give my jacket and my red stick and head on out like David Banner. Cue the music. Ding, 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 ding. I walk off into the sunset, jacket on my shoulder, hitchhiking down the road. Where's the next stop? So, so but it so makes sense because. Yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry. So, so as much as we love diversity and inclusion, a lot of these businesses were started by other cultures. And when you think about a, a lot of them are still family run. And we, we like to say that we don't like nepotism, but come on, we, we don't like it because we don't have, we're not empowered enough to utilize it for our own benefit. We, we can't stand our family. Helping us with the hookup. We got to get along with Cousin Dino if we want to hire him. We don't get along with Cousin Dino. So, no, because he steals. I don't. That man, that's though. We can't have him up in the crib. So, why well, want him in my business? Nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's what Juneteenth is for me. So, I love uh, the, the celebration and the support, but it's got to go beyond the one day and it's yeah. got to be more structured and more institutionalized. Walmart is an institution, it's not a business. Walmart hires or employs over a million people. What yeah, would that look like? <laughs> right. What would that look like if we had an institution to that degree that employs a million? <laughs> it's it's called jail, but we don't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. All right, Lord. I couldn't resist it. I couldn't <laughs> resist it. We got an institution. It's called prison. Ta da. Okay, 50 cents a day. And, um, and to, and to that, that point, like, yeah. because we don't have enough opportunities, 
in our community that legitimately will allow me to earn an honest wage, I don't have to have an illegitimate side hustle that could land Absolutely. me in prison. That, that's, that's the whole point. So uh, let's get into these uh, six uh, deals. My man, Mark Presswood is always on and commenting. He said it was in San Diego last weekend and the local market talked about this being uh, small. The uh, deliveries are not coming with uh, special cost yeah man it, it's 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 a, it's a huge thing man so we literally have to start thinking about how we can do this ourselves and that's why i i switched the brand to local biz marketing pros because if i can help local businesses with their marketing y'all know whether it's a black owned business or a white owned business or agent owned business y'all know small businesses are the foundation of this country y'all know that when we spend our money with small businesses that money stays in our community those are the businesses that are more likely to support and sponsor the little league team. Those are the businesses that are more likely to support the cancer run and give uh, of their employees and volunteers at the food pantries and stuff. So we got to be conscious with our dollars to make sure that we're spending local. And a lot of times those companies are uh, providing better services, uh, higher quality customer service, they're community oriented. They just don't have the marketing to get themselves out there so that they can grow into the institutions that can hire more people. And that's what we're going to come in and do and help it with. So six of these things, you want to kick us off? Yeah, we get started. Um, I, I, re I will admit before I would get going, I feel like I'm running a muck today. Mm -hmm. I feel off the chain this morning. And so, um, you know, talking about economic empowerment, it's like poking a bear with a stick. Well, all you got to do is just poke you a little bit, boy, and get you going. I yeah. love it. I love it. It's like That's dragging the idea. stick along the gate. Da, 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 yeah. Ding, got him. Okay. <laughs> i get us kicked off. <sighs> Bring it down. Okay. Some of the things that you can do to support, to support Juneteenth. Way number one, order food from Black-owned restaurants. Support Black... Bleh. Support black restaurant owners in your community by ordering food on Juneteenth and beyond. Um, here are or included are eight ways to find black uh, owned restaurants. You can Google to do that. There are eight ways. Just Google them. Um, oh, you can use Yelp, Uber Eats uh, to find a few of these. You can also visit uh, hungryfortheculture.com. That can help you locate uh, black owned restaurants here in St. Louis as well as other cities, but eat black, if that sounds mm -hmm. politically correct. <laughs> so eat then black, like, eat black, <laughs> black beans, <laughs> eat black rice, <laughs> eat black what? Uh. It's a very thin line. Uh, but yeah, uh, order from black owned restaurants. That's way number one. Yeah, and, and I want to yeah. go back to the beginning as well. Uh, we talked a little bit about what Juneteenth is. It's the oldest uh -huh. nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. On June 19, 1865, a Union general rode into Galveston, Texas, to announce that the Civil War had ended and slaves had been freed. Now, we ain't know. We ain't even know. This was we two still... years after. <laughs> Come on, we still getting done up, and he had to be like, "Hey, you know y'all free? What? What is this? Ain't nobody told me nothing. What this happened two and years, two years ago? Oh, hold on. And it's, Excuse it's me, I'll be funny right back. That Texas kind of still operates as if it's its own country. Like they, they're they like, can. man, uh, President who? Man, our governor. <laughs> Like, like, like we ain't doing that. <laughs> that. Y'all talking about Texas. No, we cool. We, we cool. Right, you're we're right. cool. Texas like that employee on the job be like, hey, they said we got to go down to the cafeteria for a meeting. What? I ain't doing that. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> exactly. They the wrong employee. I'm, I'm going to stay in my desk and work. I'm not going nowhere for nothing. I got work to do. They, no, they not no. doing it. No, I'm cool. Y'all go ahead. We cool. <laughs> right. Tell me about it when you get back. He's like, y'all gonna hear later. later. Good for y'all. We cool, though. We gonna keep doing what we're doing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait, wait. It's so old boy that, that uh, rode in. What's his name again? General. Uh, 
uh, uh, the union name? general, it doesn't even say his oh, name. Okay, it didn't. Here, but. I, it's not, I had his name in some else, but the general, he done rolled into town like the lady that sit up in the window in the stoop. Hey, mm -hmm. you know y'all free. What? Mm -hmm. Y'all been free two years. I don't know what y'all doing. We mm -hmm. are? Mm, Y'all should have been living the life. We should have. <laughs> what is but, going on? Yeah. But you ain't heard it's it from me. Right. But, you but you ain't heard it from me. <laughs> I ain't the one that got Y'all Negroes should have been free. <laughs> hey, don't tell me uh, how right, don't. Right. Where you going? I'm going to work. <laughs> where, where you working at? I'm going to take Wait. You still go to the plantation? You ain't got to do that no more, right? <laughs> Wait, what? Is it break time? No. It's, we all, we it's all permitted. Really? All right. Number two. On hey, the one, more, one more. One more. One more. You know, it's just like somewhere. Kept showing up. I'm going to just keep coming. Because I don't believe that. I think I think it's a trick. Nah, you trying to get me lynched. Nope. Nope. I am going in. <laughs> they ain't get me. <laughs> Y'all better not believe that fool. Y'all better not listen to that fool. Talking about don't go to work. No. You go get me. <laughs> I'm showing up. No, I'm going to wait. I'm going to let Master tell me. Master said we wasn't free. <laughs> Why would uh, they say they didn't have to? Now we're poking fun, y'all, but it's, it's not really funny. That it's not. It really is. Two years, like they they were enslaved for two years Jesus. after uh, the fact. So number two on our list: Black Lives Matter. Support the cause in these eight ways: from uh, making donations to getting uh, more involved in your local community. Uh, here are real ideals you can uh, participate in to support Black Lives Matter movement or any movement that is anti-race based, that is inclusion based, uh, that is economic empowerment based for disenfranchised people, uh, not just black people, but there's a there's a long list of disenfranchised people in this country, y'all. Just just so you know, uh, I just happen to be black, so I, I talk about our disenfranchisement, but there's a lot of people that have been wrong and uh, rights need to be adjusted so that uh, discriminatory practices are not only abolished, but those who are practicing them uh, need to also be punished and, and held accountable. Um, so uh, even in your living room, learn about these things and um, we've got to get to a place where we are unafraid to have these conversations mm -hmm. right and to and it's it is okay i think one of the challenges is it for for us as black people and i'm gonna speak for myself i don't speak for all the black people right one of the things that i feel is challenging is that um i'm not sure if um anybody outside of the black race caucasians or whatever uh, seem to 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 understand the pain, right? So I think they're afraid of feeling guilty if they talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, I think they are they hate that we are upset about <laughs> about it and that nothing has been done. So it's kind of like like if if you're some somebody that you know and love smashes my toe and I want and, and I'm hollering and screaming about my toe being smashed and you're constantly telling me well I'm not the one that did it right it doesn't negate the fact that I'm in pain because my toe was smashed right and if because my toe was smashed you reap some sort of benefit because of my toe being smashed, whether you did it or not, you still reap from. I think that's one of the challenges that the conversations, like it's okay that let's pick up from today and move forward. But I hear all the time, we as a culture have to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. And I believe that I'm more solution oriented than focusing on what happened. Okay, let's take the resources that we have now and let's build from here. But I'm also in uh, understanding 
of my brothers and sisters who, who want to point out the fact that, well, the reason that we have to pull ourselves up out of uh, by our bootstraps is because we were systematically and historically denied access to the same rights, privileges, and resources that everybody else has as a race, right? So one of the things that people tend to, to talk about is whether or not a Black person can be racist, right? Because when you think about racism, I, I think we are all prejudiced, right? Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the power to cause harm to an entire nation of people, you can't be racist, right? So I can be prejudiced and say what I don't like about another culture or another group of people, but I'm not in the power to take that prejudice, uh, my own personal feelings towards that group of people and create institutional policies that directly affect that group of people. White people and other people in power have that power. They, they have that, like they could say, I don't like black people and I have the power to take that hate that I feel personally for this group of people and punish them with that hate. And I think that is the most difficult thing for me to deal with uh, as a culture versus, uh, you know, I, I don't care that you don't like me, mm. but when you use your power to execute a personal feeling, not against me personally, because I can hold my own against anybody, but you can use your power to affect our entire race, like yeah. with policing, with uh, sentencing, with uh, a, a denial of access to funding and funds and like the, the Wells Fargo situation that just came out that they denied more black people uh, who qualify for home loans. And I'm like, y'all are literally killing our legacy. Y'all are literally affecting our uh, ability to sustain ourselves. And then y'all get mad that we have to go on welfare. Like, wait, what? Right, you wouldn't let right. me buy a house. And which, if I fell on hard times, I would have an asset that I can borrow against to keep me afloat through a COVID or something like that. But now that I don't have that asset, when things get hard, I got to go on government assistance. And now you cry about me being on government assistance. It's like, right. it's, it's, a, it's the most crazy catch-22 that there is. But to have these conversations in an int intellectual way to a degree as much as we can without emotion. It's, right. These are hard conversations to have without emotion. Absolutely. But we have to find ways to start having these conversations at the end of the day, right? So is it on me or is it on you? I think it's on you. It's on me, it's on me. Um, <clears throat> did I, well, you just made me think of a new show idea. Uh, you was giving, giving it, I was, Thinking of a new show idea, um, because I think it's going to be really interesting. I'm going to just say this and we'll move on, but it'll be really interesting and maybe even perhaps a bit controversial mm -hmm. to compare black racism to what happened to the Jewish people, right? What mm -hmm. they call it, genocide, was whatever they called it. Yeah, they, um, had, they had the Holocaust. The Holocaust, the Holocaust, the Holocaust was, to, was, was horrible. But yeah. even when you think about that, nobody would fix their mouth to say, just get over it. Yeah. Right? No, there is no. No one would there fix their no. mouth to say to a Jewish person, oh, uh, y'all need to stop making movies about that. Y'all need right. to stop talking about that. Y'all need right. to just get over that. Right? Nobody fixes their mouth to say that. But yeah. you know why nobody fixes their mouth to say that? Why? Because the Jewish community is economically empowered. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you, you have seen where well, you say anything anti-Semitic, and mm -hmm. your whole world gets shut down until you apologize. Yeah, you've yeah. seen it from yeah. uh, Minister Farrakhan and 
Uh, anybody who says anything ill about the Jewish community mm -hmm. can get shut down, like because they they have pooled their resources, they are empowered economically, they have their attorneys and their media watchdogs to go out and say, hey, anytime we see any anti-Semitism show up anywhere, we're coming to to to, the, to battle people, for that. But they have whole like they just there was on the news. Um, just here, and I forget, I think it was in Oklahoma, they were having a pride rally, and they, they busted a whole truck pool of uh, uh, white supremacists. Mm -hmm. They were in the back of a U-Haul on one of the hottest daggum days of the year, plotting, mm -hmm. you know, wow. and, and so, they, yeah, they but they here's the wonderful thing that I think did happen. They arrested them. They, you know, they got a tip off. That these jokers was hiding in the U-Haul. They were, you know, planning something, but they were doing it right downtown. And, and I, I want to say it was Oklahoma, but they were doing it during this, this pride rally. And mm -hmm. um, but they arrested all of them and detained them on the strength that they didn't whatever they was going to do. Mm -hmm. They they wanted to prevent if nothing else, they wanted to send a message. Right. If they would just that they would have did well, they didn't know. But if they would have, you know, showed up in places where they, you know, what I'm saying were were their Black Lives rallies going on, or you know, what I'm saying just mm -hmm. well, they were gonna do the thing what they did on January six, just mm -hmm. you know, it yeah. just I don't know. They did it in that in that circumstance. And God bless them because we don't want nothing to happen to our, you know, our, our family and friends who are involved in the Pride community. We don't want anything to happen to them there. But I guess my what I the point that I'm pointing out is the due diligence that they took to prevent something from happening in that circumstance. Can they not spread that around? Yeah, because that's not the only time they got tipped off about an anti supremacist group getting ready to take action doing something. Mm -hmm. I guess that's my point. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it, it's it's one yeah. of those things. Um, all right, here number three. You can educate yourself and reflect, right? This one is a good one because I got a comment about it as well. Educate and reflect. While slavery did end in 1865, racism persists in country, uh, excuse me, in countless institutions today. Use June 19th as a day to reflect on critical issues that perpetuate discrimination against black people in America and around the world. Spend a day reading about the Juneteenth history. Uh, including how black families felt after being emancipated. That's a big one there, right? Here's the next line of this is so, whoa. Watch the documentary, 13 on Netflix. We talked about that show, that documentary before on this show. Yeah, It's called 13, it's on Netflix. And when I say that documentary is mind blowing because you mm -hmm. just don't, it, it well, we talked about earlier in the year, hidden racism is mm -hmm. hidden mm -hmm. and it's yeah. hidden in so many ways you would never, never think and never. Sometimes I do have a habit of approaching life with rose colored glasses. And I understand that because I choose to see the best in the world. Right. right. I choose to. However, when you really watch that documentary, it will open your eyes about large companies like Walmart, financial institutions, the prison system alone. Mm -hmm. That will it will open your eyes and you'll find out some things. Now, this is one of the reasons when I saw this, this is one of the reasons why I tripped about Donald Trump being president. That man to the core, that man, I don't know who he loved, but, you know, I don't think he loved the Lord to the core. I don't know <laughs> because he he owns some other stuff because they got some. I dare I say, I'm going to be fair, we're going to call them sound bites, but they got some sound bites of this man saying some pretty incriminating things about mm -hmm. black folks and yeah. how he feel about black folks and calling us niggas. So, yeah. and this man was president and right. he has very opinionated views against black people the way he did. That stuff don't just die out. Now, yes, you can have this miracle change and wonder work and transformation in your life, but you can look at that man hard tell that ain't happening. So, <laughs> It, it just watch the movie. If you don't do nothing else, yeah, we say do in this podcast, go and watch the movie, the documentary on Netflix called 13. Mind blowing, yeah. you'll learn something. Um, you'll learn something. And the last little tidbit about that was engage in other movies. You know, there's lots of mm -hmm. other movies that you can watch, uh, shows, books, <clears throat> podcasts. <laughs> 
that will, uh, you know, that can help reveal a real world, um, real world present day issues. And that's one of the things I love about our show. I love about our little show, Cortez. Our little show. Our little show. We talk about, uh, we're going to be the best little big show ever. Watch, it's right, coming. Right. It's coming. Uh, but we talk about issues that I think are hard pressed that are real life. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about some subjects on this show that folks most are afraid to go there with, but we just get on out there and talk about them and kind of is what it is. So, you know, engage in your local uh, podcast, you know, yeah. black owned is great. You know, the ones that have wonderful black faces like ours is great. But get out there and engage in those podcasts that are going to talk about the subjects, black subjects that, that we need to know about. You know, yeah. and again, there are some Caucasian podcasts that are tackling some of these subjects. So you need to be a, you need to have a seat at those tables and be a voice in the room to weigh in. It's right. great when Caucasians talk about black subjects. That's great. But there needs to be black people in those discussions. Yeah. So, and I yeah. think we, we are certainly um, it, it's coming out a little bit more. And I, I want us to get to a place where. We could say what we really feel and then deal with that. Like that's the that's the challenge. And mm -hmm. hey, I I have to say this in political correctness. No, I want you to say it how you feel it and how mm -hmm. you mean it. And then let's deal with that. Yep. Right. Because there's a lot of ways to mask uh, different feelings with, with conversation. So I think that's an incredible. For us to get to a place where uh, if you're white, you can say um, how you feel. Because sometimes we get upset with other people's ignorance, right? Yeah. And when I say ignorance, I don't mean stupidity. There's a difference. Ignorance yeah. is an absence of knowledge. That's what ignorance is. Sometimes our Caucasian brothers and sisters are ignorant to certain things. And we assume that they have they they're choosing not to know that's not the case man people got yeah. stuff going on in their lives and they're just trying to live the best that they can and some things just like me we're grown we, we grow up to be ignorant to and in this day and age it is easier than ever to be ignorant to a lot of things yes. because if you just look at the facebook algorithm for for instance right Mm -hmm. The Facebook algorithm and, and all of these social platforms will only show you things based on what you like. So if I never go into another community's post and check out what they're doing and like and engage with that stuff, it will only show me the same stuff over and over and over. So I'm literally being shut out from the rest of the world, right? So that's kind of how our news is. Our news show us one sided. So you got to be conscious about putting yourself in spaces where you know the predominant thought is in stark contrast to what you believe, just so you can get a better understanding. Right. And Absolutely. I think we don't, I don't think we do that enough. Like, even as Christians, we don't sit with non Christians to try to understand what they're thinking and feeling about what it is that we believe. We just, like, like it's so funny. I see so many Christians trying to recruit other Christians to their church. I'm like, that, that ain't the mission. If I'm already saved, then don't try to get me from this congregation to come to this congregation. Right. No, right. there's umpteen billion unsaved people out there that you could be filling your church with. Yep, no. absolutely. We, do, we recruit from other churches, other saved people, talking about other pastors and what other churches ain't doing. No, go out mm -hmm. there to those army of unsaved people and bring those to your congregation. But that's a fear. That's gonna be that's gonna be a topic too because that's the, that's nothing but a fear, and that's and it. that's why some churches they're not strong in evangelism. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's a fear mm -hmm. people don't. And that's why the Bible says, "My uh, uh, we suffer for a lack of knowledge." And God also said, "I will you know love the Lord your God with all of your heart." your mind and your soul. Mm -hmm. Now the mm -hmm. mind part, people just think the mind is as simple as saying or thinking that you love the Lord, but loving him with your intelligence is what that means, right? Mm -hmm. Loving mm -hmm. him enough to be intelligent about him. 
and intelligent about his ways. You know, God has to be a pretty smart guy to create all that he created. In the yeah. time limit that he did it, he was on the clock, he got that thing done. Right. However, but he, he wants us to be intelligent about how we approach. So I think when people go out there and get and recruit other saved folks to get in a church of saved people, to continue to be saved and just stay there and look at each other in the four walls is a fear that's afraid to go outside the church and talk to people of other religions, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and not necessarily to say, nah, 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 my God better than yours, but let's talk about it. Because right. you can tell me yeah. about yours, but I'm going to tell you about mine, and let's look at the contrast between the two. It's just mm -hmm. really an exchange of information is what evangelism should be. Yes, we yeah. need the passion. Yes, we want the experience. Tell me what he did for you. That's great. But sometimes there are some nuts out there that are tougher to crack. You got to go. You have to include the experience, but you need to go through the experience and hit the knowledge. People that are rooted heavily in science. Because, again, God created the earth. He created the study of science as well. He created the things that are scientific and you can speak to God's existence scientifically if you just want to go there, but you got to get the knowledge to do so. And I think that's why people don't, they don't approach it because they don't have the knowledge. People aren't, churches aren't teaching the knowledge, they're teaching experience, which is great. I ain't taking nothing away from that, but we need more churches to teach hermeneutics. We need more churches to teach knowledge. There it is. My rant over. Rant over. <laughs> look, I'm going to get somebody on the show. We're going to talk about apologetics. We're going to go into that thing. I don't know. I'm going to find me somebody. If you know somebody that's strong <laughs> in the study of apologetics, y'all need to holler at me because I really want to go there on one of these shows. I really do. Now, I, now, now your bear just got poked. I know. <laughs> Ain't coming. You got me. You got me. <laughs> I can do that. You so, got me. A few more of these, a couple more of these. Uh, watch yes, online Juneteenth events. Tune in virtually yep. to the Juneteenth Music Festival or online celebrations yep. and find a listing of local events where you live. Uh, that's another good way. Uh, place a sign in your front yard, raise awareness and show your support for Juneteenth by decorating a sign for your front yard or door. <laughs> this is a great way to help educate younger kids uh, in your neighborhood or your community. Um, Come on man, with them that's Come on with number six. Come on with number six. We do this <laughs> all here. Celebrate with a barbecue or family meal. So, uh, barbecue. <laughs> all we need is one reason. Oh, we're going to barbecue with you, T. Gotcha. Gather your family together to celebrate freedom. Uh, since the uh, pandemic is still a serious concern, make sure. Are you following your state guidelines for indoor gatherings or outdoor gatherings or whatever? Um, but at the end of the day, um, we got to get serious about the dialogue. And I think all of these things like Black History Month, uh, Black Music uh, Month, which June is also Black Music Month, uh, Juneteenth is in June, of course. Uh, we just got to start opening up the conversations about the dialogue to say, and, and and when I say that, I don't mean only from other culture side. Like we don't typically want to hear other people out either, right? It is what it is. No, at the end of the day, we need reparations, and we don't want to hear why that might not be a good idea from somebody else's perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we gotta be grown and mature enough to have those conversations and those debates. Yeah. And at the end of the day, some of those debates will end with us agreeing to disagree. But yeah. at least I have a better understanding of your perspective. I understand why you came to that conclusion. And I'm not just guessing about why. Because if we look at it from a racial standpoint, the guess is always, are oh, they just racist? Are oh, they just racist? That's the guess. Like, oh, yeah. they, they did that because they're racist. Now, sometimes they're ignorant, meaning they just don't know. Sometimes uh, there's some other motives behind the way they move. Sometimes, like, if you were attacked and beaten by a group of another race, you think that trauma won't mess up the way you look at everybody in that race? Like, it's there's, and that happens on both sides. So there's a lot that could be unearthed if we start having more conversations.
Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, why don't we we got to close? So I just want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers. See how she gonna we sneak that in. She gonna sneak that in on Juneteenth because she's gonna forget on Sunday because she's gonna be at the barbecue for Juneteenth. And ain't nobody gonna say nothing about Father's Day. Watching watching 13th on, on Netflix. <laughs> happy Father's Day to my own dad. Happy Father's Day. Um Mr. Strayhorn, I, I'm gonna put my daddy out there because he having some daddy yeah. challenges. But and happy birthday to, to my to my partner in crime. Happy birthday, Cortez. I mean, happy birthday, happy Father's Day. Birthday too. My birthday June 25th, so it's coming. Look at that. Eight two four. There it is. It's, it's coming. So we thank y'all for allowing us an opportunity to share from our hearts, like we do every Tuesday, uh, and we just talk about things that we. We, we are uh, interested in, uh, if you guys have topics you want to see Michelle and I weigh in on, then let us know. Uh, we appreciate you all for tuning in. Uh, Mark is always uh, commenting and, and sharing his thoughts Hi. with us. Uh, I wish more of you guys would engage with the show that watches live. And if you are listening to us on the podcast, uh, make sure you rate the show, whether you like it or you don't like it, say so. Leave us a review. Uh, leave us a comment. Let us know uh, how you feel about the show, because at the end of the day, we ain't going nowhere. We so know that can uh, help us get better so our little Absolutely. show can become a big show. The big show. <laughs> the big show. If you're also if you're tuning in and you're watching us on YouTube, hit the like button. You know, and, and, and not necessarily like because you like us, although you should. Hit the like button to get us moved up in the algorithm. Uh, and we just might pop across somebody's, you know, feed when they're watching YouTube, uh, watching lives or whatnot. Uh, get us to move up in the algorithm a little bit. So like the show. Share the show, please. We don't have to do that. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, until we talk to y'all next time, get your money up because you absolutely can do it. But more importantly, you deserve to do it each and every single